Good morning, guys. Coming at you from a gym in Ojai, California. And I wanted to share, I was just sitting here thinking, I'm like, I wish people could understand this. And so I'm sharing. I have been pretty lean for the last, I don't know, six years, six, seven years. And I don't track any of my food. I don't overstress about it, but I know why. I know what I know what I'm doing that other people aren't doing. Do you guys want to know? Are you ready to hear this? Are you ready to receive this? It's kind of like, let's say you're really good at marketing and you're telling someone that could completely change their business and you can tell they're not really receiving it. It's like, dude, do you understand the value of what I'm telling you? That's where I'm at right now with this. Okay. I want you to like listen because <laughs> I'm telling you if you can take this in and actually apply it in your life, it doesn't have to be so damn hard. You can be lean and fit without having to be psychotically obsessed with your food, tracking every freaking morsel of food that goes in your mouth, getting in these weird restrictive mindsets, binging, giving up because it's so unsustainable and hard that you freaking hate it. It doesn't have to be like that. So here it is. Number one, I'm gonna hit on nutrition first, okay? I'm gonna get into some other things, training and some other lifestyle things. Nutrition first. I simply think, how can I eat protein first? How can I maximize protein? Every single time, are you hearing me? Every single time I put food in my mouth, I think protein. Everything in addition, everything else is in addition to the protein. Okay, this also works with because I lift weights. That helps, okay? But my first thought is protein, and then my second thought is fiber, vegetables. When I say fiber, I'm not talking about freaking Metamucil. I'm talking about vegetables. And I vary my protein sources. Chicken, beef, salmon, turkey even protein bars and whey protein, right? If I want to treat, I'm going to lean, I'm going to lean towards a built bar a lot more than something that's super calorically dense with just fat and carbs. And that is, that is it. The reason so many people have low muscle mass and higher body fat than they want is because they eat a lot of fat and carbs mixed together and low protein. And I've seen it happen over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Client comes to me, I eat so healthy, girl. I eat all like grass-fed, pasture-raised. I eat really good. I'm like, okay, I want you to track for a couple weeks. Let's see what's going in there. And every time protein's like 17%, 20% of their overall calories. So you know what that means? That means almost everything you're eating is able to be stored as body fat. And do you know how easy it is in our day and age to overdo it on that? We sit everywhere. We sit just to travel. Instead of walking, we sit in a car. Instead of walking around working, we sit behind a desk. We're barely freaking moving. Some people say that even elite athletes would be considered sedentary because of how much they sit for the rest of the day. We're talking professional athletes, okay? So, protein very unlikely to be stored as body fat. Also the most satiating of all macronutrients. Fiber, impossible to be stored as body fat. Extremely satiating because it fills up your belly and your digestive tract and it takes a long time. Both of those it takes a long time to digest. It actually burns calories, about 20% of the calories you eat from protein just to go digest them. So if you want to make your life easy with nutrition, just think, I need protein first, and then I'm going to add some fat and carbs to that. But protein is the big priority. And when I think carbs, I'm going to think, how can I add a bunch of vegetables or fiber to this and be a little less heavy on those dense, starchy carbs? Dense, starchy carbs are not bad. If you have type 2 diabetes, they're not going to do you a favor. If you have high blood sugar, they're not going to do you a favor. You might need to drop them down for a little while, but for everybody else, or unless you have some weird autoimmune thing or SIBO, I'm not talking about, okay? Everybody always wants to be like, well, what if you have this? I'm like, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about therapeutic nutrition. I'm talking about just everybody else that doesn't need some specialized therapeutic thing. 
Carbs help you fuel performance. They help your brain have power. They help you make serotonin so you can be happy. Carbs are not bad. I know I'm a keto specialist and that is why I wrote short-term keto because I'm tired of seeing this dogmatic black and white thinking. Carbs make you fat. That's freaking bullshit. That is not correct. Insulin is not just a fat storage hormone. That comes out when you eat carbs. It's an energy shuttling hormone. Insulin is our friend. Maybe you excreted a little too much because you ate way too many carbs and didn't move for so long that your cells were like, holy shit, we don't need any more glucose. But other than that, you want to shuttle glucose into your muscles. It gets stored there as glycogen and it makes ATP or energy really quick in your next workout. And that brings me to my next point of why I think I'm able to maintain a lean physique and a lot of people aren't. I'm just being real. I'm not trying to be cocky about that. I'm just saying. I'm trying to share with you what I'm doing that I observe that other people aren't doing. And it's, I fucking, sorry. I haven't moved. If you guys know me in real life, you can get a lot of F-bombs. <laughs> but I freaking move. I freaking move and I move intensely. Not all the time you see me walking. This has been my cardio of choice lately. It just felt right, felt aligned. But I'm, you, well, I slowed down a little for this, but I'm usually at a 10 incline at like 3.7 for 30 to 60 minutes, depending if I'm like working and catching up on stuff. Some people might, that might be their whole workout for the day. That's my warm up. And the only reason I don't even look at it as a warm up, I'm really just actually trying to work and, and walking at the same time makes me get really creative. Here's the other thing. I push some intensity levels pretty much every day. I want my nervous system getting firing. You know that feeling when you do a deadlift and you're like, holy shit, that, I'm looking for the holy shit moment because guess what? The rest of the day, I'm sitting, I'm barely freaking moving. And this is where the carbs thing comes into play because when you move and you lift weights or you do high intensity training, like true high intensity, like it freaking sucks, like you're scared to do the next round because it's like, freak man, this is gonna be hard. That empties out what I call your carb sponges. Your muscles and your liver are huge storage tanks, huge storage tanks of carbs. Do you understand this? The, like, the average person can store about 400 grams of carbohydrates in their muscles and liver. Average person. Athletes, up to 800 grams. This is why I can eat carbs and not get fat. Right there, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm emptying out when I do this high intensity exercise and lifting, I'm using the carbs that I ate yesterday and they're coming out into my bloodstream to make ATP to fuel my exercise performance. So guess what happens when I get home? They're emptied, they have room for more carbs. So the carbs go into my muscles and my liver, not fat stores. Carbs only make you fat when your muscles and liver are totally full because you've eaten plenty of carbs and you have barely freaking moved. Where else are they gonna go? There's no room in the storage tanks. So they have to be stored as body fat so you don't die <laughs> from high blood sugar. So guess what? Yes, your fat, body fat has saved your life over and over because you overdid it on how many carbs you actually needed and not exercising to use them. So thank you, body fat, for saving my freaking life, right? So start to get a look at that. If you have a lot of body fat, realize you're just eating more. Yes, fat, body, dietary fat can definitely be stored as body fat too. And it's actually easier to store body fat, dietary fat as body fat than carbs. Did you know that? When you're not in a ketogenic state, and keto means you're using fat as your primary fuel source, it's being turned into ketones in your liver, that can come from your body fat or dietary fat. When you're not in that state, did you know that it takes 10 times fewer calories, few, less energy for your body to turn dietary fat into body fat than it does carbs? Wrote about that in my book. So. It's, yeah, I'll save this life, Mariah. So, 
I know you've heard it before. It is the basic sim simple principle of overeating creates body fat, but like, how do we manage this so we're not hungry and we're just trying to like starve ourselves and all this stuff? You gotta get into the gym, and you gotta freaking move, and you gotta get some intensity levels. This, what I'm doing right now, low intensity cardio, this runs off fat oxidation mostly. When you go intense, when I get all beast mode and I'm doing my sprints and I'm lifting heavy and I'm making all these ugly faces, glycolytic, okay? And we need both of those. And every time you do that, remember, you are emptying out your carb storage tanks and making room for more. So that from the nutrition and training standpoint is honestly what I feel I'm doing that a lot of people aren't doing. I'm just, I'm being real. I get comments all the time. People are like, wow, dude, you were working hard. I'm like, well, I'm having fun because I actually think it's fun to work hard and kill it in the gym and see what I'm capable of. But yes, I do notice I am going more intense than a lot of people. And I'm in here consistently. I don't do that on Thursday and the next Sunday and the next Wednesday. I'm in here every freaking day. Not everybody has those levels of recovery yet. So it's okay to take a walking day in between. You don't wanna overdo it and get a negative connotation with working out because you drive yourself into the ground every time you gotta. I wrote a post about stress tolerance recently. You have to gradually build that. I am so conditioned now. I have to keep pushing that edge, okay? So if you have hypothyroidism or adrenal fatigue or something like that, no, you gotta be gentle with yourself for a little while but still get in here and freaking walk, get that lymphatic flow going, get the blood flow going, move and gradually work your way into it. Okay, speaking of people with like adrenal fatigue and overstress and all that, leads me to my next thing that I feel is one of the keys to me staying lean all these years, pretty effortlessly, and that is sleep. Did you know that you become Insulin resistant. You look like an insulin resistant person, like pre-diabetic, after one night of poor sleep. Check it out. Plenty of research to show that. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Why does that matter? That means your blood sugar is staying higher all of the time. So what did I say happens when your body has nowhere to put the, the blood sugar in your bloodstream? Your muscles aren't, they don't need it. Your liver doesn't need it. Your brain's like, I'm good. At that time, you're like, I have plenty of energy. It's gonna have to put it as fat source. So if you would like to get on the fast track to being fat, don't sleep. If you would like to get on the fast track to having dementia and Alzheimer's when you're older, don't sleep. If you would like to be on the fast track to adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, chronic fatigue, poor gut health, all of that, then don't sleep enough. It's not like a would be nice thing, it's crucial. I've many times thought about writing a ebook called The Sleep Diet. When I got this on, in, like, on lock in my life, it was during COVID, I was like, well, I guess I'll just sleep all I want. I lost almost 20 pounds during COVID, no joke, from just sleeping more. My appetite went down like crazy too. Okay. Last thing, intermittent fasting, I think is one reason that I'm able to kind of eat whatever I want with those principles I've talked about before, with protein, fiber being priorities, whole food from nature being priorities. If I'm gonna eat something processed, it's gonna be mostly protein, like a built bar, okay? I'm not gonna sit there and snack on something that's super high in carbs and fat. And if I do, like I'm having Siete Foods chips or something, I'm gonna dip, because they're mostly carbs and fat, I'm gonna dip them in cottage cheese so I can boost the protein. That kind of thinking, how can I add protein to this, okay? But when I'm on the daily, pretty much, I intermittent fast. And sometimes, what does that mean? It means I eat in a condensed eating window during the day. And this is easy for me now, okay? Um, you can adapt to this pretty well. But I, the biggest thing is ending earlier. Ending eating earlier. If you are intermittent fasting and you're on that, I don't eat all day and then I go off the rails at night, 
you are not on a I'm improving health outcomes journey. You are on a obesity pattern journey. Do you hear me? I've seen this so many times. It's so common in the keto world because most people fall into intermittent fasting when they're on keto because when you're eating a diet that's mostly protein and fat, you favor dopamine production. And guess what dopamine does? It makes you less hungry. So they wake up, cortisol comes in, dopamine's high, they're just not hungry. And so what do they do? They wait till two o'clock and they feel like they're winning life. And then they just go off the rails at night. And guess what that does? Guess what that does? It destroys your body's ability to recover. When you eat right before bed, a whole bunch of stuff, your body, instead of being able to go in recovery mode while you're sleeping, it's trying to digest all your food. Your gut deserves a break. And so if you can eat, stop ending, stop eating, ending that like two or three hours before bed at least. It's usually a lot longer than that for me. I'm not a Nazi about it. Like every once in a while life happens and I'm like, okay, yeah, it's like 7.30. I'm going to go to 8.30. But, you know, every, every once in a while that happens. But for the most part, I don't sweat it if it does. But for the most part, I don't do that. I end eating around like 5. I'm asleep by 9. Most of the time, right? So that ending eating earlier when you don't have food, when your body's not trying to digest, it can actually repair your gut, repair your brain, repair your entire body. It can go into repair mode, but it cannot do that when it's trying to digest all your food. You will, it's not about body composition on this one. It helps with that a lot, but it's about literally your entire life quality. Your brain literally cleanses itself when you're sleeping and when you're busy digesting food, none of that can happen. And just try it. Try intermittent fasting. Try ending, eating three, four hours before bed for a while. And then eat right before bed one time. See how you feel when you wake up. You will instantly understand. You'll be like, whoa, dude. I could have lived my whole life feeling like that all the time. So, as a recap, how do I stay effortlessly lean without being a psycho Nazi about tracking everything? I always think protein fiber, protein fiber, protein fiber, protein fiber, protein fiber. Not gonna be stored as body fat. The amino acids from protein help you make all your neurotransmitters for mental health, um, give you stronger collagen production. They do everything. Amino acids are freaking everything. That's how you build your body. And protein is full of them. High quality protein sources as much as you can. Don't sweat it. If you're at a restaurant somewhere, they don't have pasture raised chicken, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Just focus on that vegetables how can I add nutrition in and then with the little then I'm going to sprinkle fat and carbs on this that's how we need to think because in our day and age everything is fat and carbs and our brains are wired to want them as a survival mechanism um let's see favorite source of fat for me uh plant fats olive oil avocado oil I love to like roast vegetables or sweet potatoes or whatever douse a bunch of olive oil or avocado oil, oil on them, put a bunch of chunky salt, almost burn them, stuff like that. Any kind of stir fry, anything I make in the pan. Also like grass fed butter, that's pretty much it. Um, and, and the animals I'm eating. Um, if you track your food, you'll be surprised to see you can build up your fat real quick because it's more than double the calories than carbs and protein. Okay, recapping again. Hold on, you guys are asking what? Oh, what's up, Alex? Hey, girl. What time do you start and end eating? Okay, um, it really depends, but typically it's gonna be somewhere in like the 11 to 12, 11 a.m. to 12. Yesterday was different. I woke up really freaking hungry. I started my period yesterday, that's probably why. And so I roll with it. I had some protein bars on the way to the airport at like 8.30 in the morning, which would be 9.30 Utah time, but I don't sweat it every once in a while. If it's earlier, I'm way, I'm gonna be way more likely to start earlier if I'm really hungry than I am to end later because of everything I just talked about. And then I usually end around five, six, something like that. Sometimes I get really hungry around three or four o'clock, so I just freaking feast, I'm good. I just let that kind of come down as I get ready for bed. In my mind, as soon as it hits like seven o'clock, it's like, oh my gosh, it's almost bedtime. At eight o'clock, I take melatonin, magnesium, and I start winding down 
I'm in my bed by 8.30 and I'm asleep at nine. What protein bars do I suggest? Built bars, baby. Built bars. Yep, Coach Jay, you got it. Built bars are freaking good. They're almost pure protein. They're only like 130 to 180 calories. They're so good. Obsessed with Built bars. Yes, Built. Um, okay, again, you got to freaking move every day, even if it's just walking. But eventually walking is not enough if you wanna make this easy. You gotta push yourself. You gotta hit some high intensity levels. You gotta see what your muscles are capable of. It's not just about emptying out the carbs from your muscles. It creates hormone responses in your body. There's hermetic adaptations. When we stress our body, it becomes stronger. We release growth hormone. We become more insulin sensitive. All of these things. Insulin sensitive in a nutshell means I eat carbs and they go into my muscles and liver, not my body fat. Okay, we gotta make room for them. Just think about that. Go lift like a freaking beast. Go do some HIIT workouts. It's fun. It's also the, one of the most powerful antidepressants on the freaking planet. You wanna know why I'm happy all the time? Because I got these things in play in my life like freaking clockwork. And as you can see, I'm on a freaking girls trip in Ohio right now and I'm still doing it. I was in Vegas at a health conference. I'm still doing it. I still got up and meditated, did my morning routine, my gratitude, my gym workout. I do not change my basics because of my environment. Very rarely, if there was no gym here, I didn't know what I was walking into. I'd be out walking, jogging in nature, okay? Gotta get that in play. Get that system in your life. And the result starts coming in on autopilot sleep. I have learned to not be afraid to tell friends or people staying with me. I have to go to bed now. Just letting you know, I, go to be, I start going to bed at eight. Communicate. Just letting you know. So they know. When they, we're sitting there talking, it's 45, they're like, okay, yeah, I know you gotta go to bed. Right, communicate. Boundaries. Show up for you so you can show up better for everybody else. Sleep. How many days a week do I work out every day? I explained that a little bit earlier. I go intuitively off my body. If I feel like I don't have a lot to give, I just walk like this. I'll probably walk. On those days, probably walk 30 to 60 minutes. That's good enough for me. That's honestly kind of rare. I have really high recovery because of my sleep and the way that I eat. And I'm highly trained. So, yeah, it's, I, I, it's not hard for me to come in here and crush it. And I got like 24 hours to recuperate. But if you're just starting and you're not there yet, give yourself a recovery, some more recovery days. But walk on those recovery days, get your lymphatic flow going, brain going, all that. And the last one is intermittent fasting. It's just smart. We live in a food abundant world. We can have all the food we want whenever we want. Aren't we blessed? Aren't we lucky? But we have to be smart about it. And we need to find lifestyle rhythms that help us stay healthy. And intermittent fasting is a really easy way to do that. You can start with a 12 hour eating window and then go to 10 and then go to eight. But the biggest thing, even if you're not gonna officially intermittent fast, is stop eating three hours before bed so your body can recover. You will wake up feeling so much better. I do recommend eating some carbs in your life as you can handle them so you get good serotonin production so you can sleep better, okay? If you're on your keto journey right now, good. Some, some people need to do that because they didn't move and they, they didn't get insulin sensitive and they ate way too many carbs and fat. Their body's not in a good way right now. So if you need to do a little phase of keto or low carb to resensitize, resensitize yourself to insulin, the thing that's bringing your muscles and your little carbs, do that. But eventually, if you haven't read my book, Short Term Keto, it goes into all this, explains it, explains why I don't think you need to do keto forever. Keto is a healing diet. It's a metabolic fixer. You don't need to do it forever, and I do not think it is optimal to do it forever. <laughs> Sleepy book. You guys want that? Seriously, though, I can't tell you how many clients that I, like, they've come to me, and I'm like, listen, <laughs> I'm just to be real with you. You just need to sleep and start saying no to people and have some more downtime, and your weight's going to fall off. <laughs> I had to release a client once. I was like, you don't need to work with me anymore. You just need to sleep. 
she came back to me like almost a year later. She's like, holy shit, my thyroid is healed. Everything's healed. I had to stop getting up so early. I had to let myself sleep. I had to take, take the reins off on working out so hard. And now guess what she can do? Now she can go pedal to the metal because she healed. Okay. Uh, do I have a favorite built bar? Oh man, girl, that's hard to choose. I like the coconut one. I like the Oreo one. They're, they're so freaking good. Um, I order them online by the box. They're cheaper that way. Just a heads up. All right, what if it's a morning where the only time we can get a workout in is in the morning but have to sacrifice sleep for it before work? Oh, I love this question. You gotta fix your nighttime. This is, so I'm really, really strict on the morning routine with my clients. Like you wanna change your life. You wanna be the captain of your ship instead of just existing in your life every day. You gotta have a moment to connect with yourself and source, whatever that is for you. Otherwise, you're gonna, you're on a freaking hamster wheel. How are you gonna create your life? It, it to me, that what I see is me being on a hike I'm not even looking where the trail is or anything around me. I'm just looking down. Uh, and then I'm uh, an hour into it. I'm like, where the crap am I? That's your life when you don't have any sort of morning routine in place. No sense of direction. No writing goals. No meditation. No gratitude. You're on a freaking hamster wheel. So you got to go to bed earlier. Yep. You got to go to bed early. You got to get real about that. I used to think 10 o'clock was when my brain used to be like, I guess it's time to start going to bed. Now it's eight o'clock. I had to get real about that shit. And you can create that new habit. I used to be the biggest night owl in the freaking world. Didn't want to let go of today. All this stupid shit. Guess what that leads to? Anxiety, overeating at night, trying to work at night and stuff or do stressful stuff, watching TV. You know what? There's a guy coming on my podcast. His name's Dr. Porter. He created Brain Tap, which is freaking amazing. I cannot wait to introduce him to you guys on Inside Out Health. He said that when you're looking at a screen, your brain is processing about 100,000 pieces of information. When you're looking around in regular life, it's about 25,000 because of all the little pixels. So think about that. You want to run yourself into freaking ruin, stare at a screen all day. I wonder if a bunch of you guys jump off right now. <laughs> All right, that's, that uh, is coffee in the AM and cardio. Okay, absolutely. Um, all right, that's all, guys. That's what I'm doing. Protein and fiber. Working out like a freaking beast. Listening to my body when it needs recovery. Backing off, which isn't often when you get to a certain level. Sleep. Prioritize sleep. If you are not, if you think you're healthy and you're not prioritizing sleep, you're not there yet. Just be real with you. You are not there yet. Because once you get that figured out, you're going to be like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dude, I thought I was okay, and I was not. I was not okay. <laughs> Just wait. I've experienced it. Many of my clients have experienced it. You want to be happy? You got to sleep. We're like big babies that grew up. Do you like babies that haven't had their sleep? That's you. You're just a big baby that grew up. So if you're depressed and anxious and gaining body fat and all these things and you're not sleeping, fix it. Fix it. Go ham. If you have a hard time sleeping, get curious. Hire a sleep coach. Read some sleep books. Figure that out. Um, melatonin. I really recommend reading Dr. John Lawrence's book, Melatonin Miracle Molecule, I believe is the name of it. I think it's like melatoninbook.com or something like that. John Lawrence is freaking amazing. He's been on my podcast. He's going to be on it again. He's the dude talking about high dose melatonin. Check it out. He's really uh, questioning all that stuff. People are saying it like down regulates your own production, all that. Um, okay. That's it. Just want to share that with you guys. I hope you could receive that. Ask yourself, what are those things am I not doing? And I can't tell you how many people are like, oh yeah, I work out. And then I spend an extended amount of time with them. I'm like, no, you freaking don't. <laughs> and there's people I love, you know. I'm not trying to be an asshole, but it's just like, I can tell that it's not a priority for them like it is for me. So I'm just sharing. Like, that's the difference. Does other stuff come in your way and you just like put working out on the back burner? For me, working out comes first. Everything else goes on the back burner. Everything else can wait because I know what it does for my life. I know what it does for my mood and my energy and my body. 
It is self-care to the freaking max. Um, explanation of protein fiber. I'm going to post this live, but in a nutshell, they're not going to be stored as body fat. You can build your neurotransmitters, build your gut health, build your mental health, keep you full for a long time, and not be stored as body fat. Full of micronutrients. Meat and plants, baby. Meat and plants. Eat them. Notice how that's what we showed up on the planet and that was available for us to eat. Eat as much of that as you freaking can. You don't need to be in this restrictive, crazy mindset. When you're prioritizing protein and fiber, you will be so freaking full and have so many micronutrients in you. The fries and shit is going to become unappealing because you're freaking full. You know? Yes, I use more than five milligrams. <laughs> I'm experimenting right now. I use a 20 milligram high dose melatonin. Um, it's through a practitioner site that I use. I've experimented all the way up to, what did I try? 100 and something, 120. John Lawrence's melatonin suppositories, they have glutathione in them, 200 milligrams of melatonin. I just don't find myself motivated a lot to use a suppository, but the reason they do that is because the absorption is super high. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. Think of those things. Which one? Pick one. Pick one. Is it protein and fiber? Is it stop eating early before bed? Is it prioritizing sleep and going to bed earlier? That is where it's at. It is not about the morning. Getting better sleep is about going to bed earlier. Nothing that's happening in your life after 8 o'clock is enhancing your life that much. No, it is not. What are you doing during that time? Even if you're trying to work and create a business, you're not effective at that time. Go to freaking sleep and get up earlier when your brain is on full tilt and rearrange your life that way. Okay? Maybe it's pushing yourself more in the gym. Get intuitive with your body. It can do a lot more than you think. And when it needs a break, love it enough to give it that. Magic happens in the recovery. All right. I'll close this out. Thank you for being here, guys. Have a great day. Bye.